Welcome to video three in this uh, Maya Principles series. Uh, in the first video, we took a look at creating the bottom pieces that support our polygon chair to help give us a sense of proportions. In the second video, we took a look at duplicating one side over to become the other to save half of our work. And we also took a look at creating these individual slats across the top. Now what we're left with is actually a small problem here. First of all, it's that this chair seems a little too close to the ground based on what we have in our photo reference. Our second problem is that nothing in this chair is named correctly so far. You'll notice that if I select one of these cubes, in this case polycube 12, or this one polycube 5, it really doesn't tell me much about what these individual items are. Now, what we do have so far, though, before we take a look at renaming these, if I select everything in my model, you'll notice that I have a fairly efficient, fairly low polygon model. I haven't added tons of divisions. I've just added enough to allow me to create some basic curvature to the form. My polygon count, the number of faces which I've actually created, is still very low and very simple. I'm just going to make it easy to manage. Well, to actually group this a little bit better, I'm going to go to Window and go to Hypergraph Hierarchy. Now this is a file and mesh organization system. It's a window, just like you would expect in Windows. We can have individual files, and we can make groups for these files. Now it's helpful, just like you don't want clutter on your Windows desktop, it's helpful to make sure that you keep everything labeled and named appropriately. You wouldn't want on your Windows desktop 100 folders called new folder 1 through 100, just like you wouldn't want 100 Word documents called Word document 1, Word document 2, Word document 3, etc. So right now, that's actually what we have. We have cube 1, cube 2, cube 3. I want to know what these are, or at least I want to have organized folders to help me understand what these are. Well, in the creation process for each of these, uh, each node was added to the hypergraph at the same time it was added to the viewport, meaning that this also sort of acts a little bit as like a timeline of how I created my individual pieces. You can see if I select the first four, which were the first four I created, those are of course the bottom pieces. The remaining nine are the top slats. To organize these, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the first four. These are my bottom supports. And I'm going to go to Edit and choose group. Now the hotkey for this is control G. So when I'm grouping the rest of my objects for this tutorial, I'm going to be using the hotkey control G. When I hit group, you'll notice that my organization for this, well, it's actually organized pretty well. I now have a group and four individual nodes beneath it. Here are my nine other nodes all through the rest of the scene. We'll get to those in a second. Now this group, you'll notice its transformations are completely frozen, and its pivot point is going to be centered at the origin. Usually you want your group's pivot point to be centered in the middle of your object. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Modify and choose Center Pivot, putting that pivot point, as we see, right in the center of my object. Now, the group is interesting because it allows me to select all of my objects and move them at once based on the group folder. It also allows me to select them easily based on that group folder. However, these objects are not combined. In fact, I can still select individually one of these objects and move them around separately. Combining is a process that you'll probably examine later on. It's a process which looks at taking two individual objects and actually making them one so that their components can be merged and that they can become seamless. That's not what's actually happened here. Each of these pieces is still very independent. Well, here's my group, it's just group one, that still really doesn't help me all that much. What I want to do is I want to right click on group one and choose rename. This is going to allow me to create a new name for this group and I'm actually going to choose something as straightforward as seat underscore 
supports. So that's seat supports. And I use an underscore instead of a space because Maya actually doesn't support spaces. Uh, so I have my seat supports group. I'm now going to select my nine other cubes, which represent the slats, and again hit Control G to group these. I've got another group called Group 1. I'm going to name these seat underscore slats. Now I've still got all these cubes named 1 through 13. That really doesn't bother me all that much, as long as they're in a named group and the names group make, name groups make sense. In fact, we do know that these two pieces, though, should be in another group. They kind of fit together. In fact, I would call both of these groups together the seat. So if I have both selected, I can hit Control G. And you'll notice that this group, if I rename this, can be called the seat. Now the seat slats, let me go modify and choose center pivot. And the seat, let me go modify and choose center pivot as well. Now I have a fully selectable uh, piece, which we're going to edit in just a little bit. Now, the relationships between these are interesting because what we actually have are child nodes, which as you see here are nodes which are inside of a group. The group itself can be referred to as a parent node. And in a case like this, the seat group might even be like the grandparent node. Now each one of these children can go do their own thing, run wherever they want, but when the parent goes, the child has to come with it. And that's what's interesting about these relationships. You'll also notice that I can navigate through my relationships in the hypergraph using the arrow keys on the keyboard. By using left and right, I can navigate through siblings. By hitting up, I can go to a parent, and up will continue on to the grandparent, or down will continue through the chain. Left and right here in this case goes between siblings again. If I don't want to see all of the small children as well, I can right click on some of these groups and even say collapse, which will give me a little red triangle. As you see here, underneath this node, that shows that there's actually something inside of it. And it kind of collapses up these folders, makes them a little bit easier to see. So I've got a seat node, seat supports, seat slats. I can even make a piece of geometry, such as this sphere, and I can make this seat part of this spheres group. In fact, it doesn't have to be just folders. Geometry can be parents as well. I can parent this in several ways. One is in the hypergraph. I can use my middle mouse button to parent the seat to this sphere by just simply dragging it on to the object. So I use my middle mouse button and I hold it down and I let go when I'm clicking straight on top of that node. I keep hitting undo to undo that. I can also select my seat and then hold down shift to select the parent. So select the child first, then select the parent. And I can hit P on the keyboard. That will create this parent-child relationship. I can also make a blank group and add these elements to a blank group. If I hit control G, you'll see it'll give me a null group. If I right-click on Null and rename this, in this case, Chair, because eventually we're going to have other parts to the chair than just the seat, I can add the seat to the chair group. The chair group I'll leave at the origin because the whole chair essentially will be centered around this point later on. And the seat, to change my proportions so they match a little bit better, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my Move tool, pull it up ever so slightly, and then I think we have an appropriate distance. And that's been video three. In the next video, we're going to look at building out the individual arms and legs of this chair.